of our reflection is divine favor and grace or divine grace and favor when you hear grace and favor what comes to your mind from what you've been hearing probably from televangelists and all of that once you hear because of grace and favor what comes to your mind it is mostly 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 material benefit hello am i talking to somebody eh? when we say favor follow you when we say favor follow you when you sing that song, favor is my name, favor is my name. What, what comes to your mind? <laughs> is it not that when others are looking for a job, you'll be in your house and they'll just call you, hey, come and take this job. There is no need for interview for you. Favor. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Now, today... I have told you before that the biblical use of concepts is much more different than the dictionary or the worldly use of them. If you want to understand favor and grace, it has to come, by from, it has to come from the scripture. They mean the same thing, divine grace and favor. The same word that translates grace translates favor, both in Hebrew and in Greek. All of those words, they go, um, they, they go together. And they mean different things. They can mean from the ones that have said both material benefits to, you know, appearing, um, how do you put it, attractive before people or preference by people and stuff like that. All of those are part of the meaning of grace and favor. But the full meaning of grace and favor didn't come until the New Testament after Christ was born and St. Paul was the one who developed it. Grace for St. Paul is the gift of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then the gift that Jesus himself gives to those who come to believe in him. And that is salvation. That is the ultimate definition of grace and favor. Praise God. I'm trying to be, I want to make sure I understand it. Because um, when some preachers preach about grace and favor, um, the things that come to your mind, honestly, are things you don't have to go for crusade. Or go for a program to get. People don't go for those places and they get them. That's just the truth. The things they preach about grace and favor are like your natural human rights. They, don't, they are not reserved for Christians. Hello? They are not reserved for Christians. They don't come to you because you, be, you believe in Christ. It's not true. Those things you hear um, some ministers telling you, because you are a Christian, you have been highly favored. This will come to you. My dear brother, you don't need to go to a crusade to have those things. Quote me anyway. I'm spoiling your feet now. Huh? When you understand, when you understand grace and favor, and you understand how these things operate, you will know that many of the exaggerated things we do as Christians to get these things, you don't listen. It is even called grace and favor for the same reason that you don't need to go to get it. It comes to you. David did not go to any crusade though when the favor and the grace of kingship came to him. Where was he? There was no announcement that the man of God, Samuel, was coming. No big board, no flyers, no publicity, no radio announcement. Because what Samuel went to was like crusade in the house of uh, Jesse. Did he announce he was coming? Did they know he was coming? Nobody knew. And are you aware that all those who were present when the man of God arrived, none of them got that favor? Who got the favor? Who was not there? So sometimes, most people who run to all these crusades, all these ones they do here, and all these hyped um, stuff like that, many of you will go. That favor you are looking for there will come and meet somebody who didn't go anywhere. It's a fact of life. Accept it or not. So you need to understand the biblical meaning of divine grace and favor why am i telling you all of this the woman that the angel said hell full of grace the lord is with you or you have found favor those two words were used for mary in the fullest sense full of grace you have found favor with the lord what is that favor 
What is the favor? Full of grace and favor. Yet, even the simple act of giving birth was not even easy. Normally, women should give birth in their homes, Abby, or in a, a hospital or something. That was the period of census you had to go. A pregnant woman shouldn't ride on a donkey. But Joseph took Mary. She took the rough ride. I don't know for how many days. Or for how many hours. With the pregnancy. And when they got to Bethlehem. Even to get an inn. An inn is the equivalent of a hotel. All the whole hotels were already booked. And she was carrying God. Why didn't God make allowance for at least a common simple accommodation and she was carrying god this is somebody carrying the bible says in john 1 verse 14 and what became flesh and dwelt among us and we saw his glory the glory as of the only begotten son of god full of grace and truth she who is carrying him is full of favor and grace whom she is carrying is full of grace and truth yet God did not even spare one room for her. And she ended up where? Animal farm. Favor. And grace. Where do you find it? Hallelujah. Do you still need favor and grace? <laughs> Praise God. Do you still need favor and grace? Yes, you need it. You, you already have it. The only problem is that some ministers make you feel like it is some pie in the sky that you have to go and get somewhere. So follow her life. All of those difficulties surrounding Jesus was born where animals were kept. So Mary didn't even have the bare comfort of normal midwifery, so to say, for a birth. Only God knows what Joseph went through because I'm told that many men cannot stand the sight of their wife giving birth. Abby? All these men who carry muscles up and down, I'm the, um, the man of the house and all of that. They are as well from pregnancy. I'm told that some men cannot even stand a woman groaning in the agony of birth. Some men have been forced, or, or some who have said, ah, what in day there, I will go, I will go. They say when they went there and the whole thing started, many of them just collapsed and fainted. They were not the one pushing, they were not the one going through the pain, but they couldn't stand it. And I'm sure Joseph was forced to do many of the things that a man ordinarily may not have done. And they are carrying the fullness of grace and favor. Praise God. Are you following me? Are you following me? Because when you are a Christian and things are going somehow, somehow you are beginning to wonder, uh -uh, I thought you were supposed to be the highly favored of God. I thought we are supposed to be the most favored of God. We are full of grace. Where is it? Praise God. Oh. Hallelujah. This is divine grace and favor. And nobody can even use the concept of favor and grace to deceive you. Because in the Bible, nobody actually went looking for favor. All those that God called and favored, they were on their own. Mary was on her own. She didn't go for any crusade. The truth is that Jesus was not even a Christian. Mm -hmm. He was no Christian. He operated under the Jewish religion. That's how he was going to wear synagogues. So, so the greatest blessing of Christians and perhaps your biggest advantage over any other human being is your location in the kingdom. So the fuller definition of grace and favor is channel. Everybody says channel. In other words, God does not favor you or give you grace to distinguish you, make you different from others. No. When the grace of God is fully operational in your life, it is the ability and capacity to be used by God, first and foremost for his divine purposes, and secondly for the good of others. So a highly favored person, a grace person, is a medium, a channel, through which the blessings of God, the presence of God, the salvation of God, gets to others at to the other end hello how many of us wants to have favor and grace you already have it